Uh, welcome in, everyone. Uh, we're going to wait like 20-ish seconds, and then we'll, uh, we'll get going. All right, I'm going to get started. Um, so my name is Soren Rood. I'm here with my colleague, uh, Reza Shivani. I'm a product manager, and uh, Reza leads our data team at Replit. Uh, today, we're here to showcase and talk to you um, about our new search engine. So as, Ma as Amjad mentioned uh, during his keynote this morning, uh, as of two days ago, this is now live to 100% of users. So you can now search through the content of over 100 million public REPLs. Um, what's really neat about this is that anything that's public uh, on Replit is now discoverable from the homepage of replit.com. So anything from specific code snippets, uh, templates, other people on Replit, uh, community content, our documentation, coding tutorials, et cetera, everything is now just one search away uh, from the homepage of Replit. Uh, so we're, we're really excited to show this off. And first, we're just going to start with a demo. I think that's the best way to really show some of the power of, of search. So I'm just going to share my screen here. And here we are at Replit. Uh, Reza, can you see this OK? Is it still viewable? Cool. OK, so uh, as you can see, we're on the Replit homepage. I'm logged in. Um, I am going to start by. Sorry, Soren, I still see yeah. the um, Replit search engine page. Oh, let me switch it one second. Um, OK, it's sharing. What about now? Yes, I see it. OK, cool. So let's, let's assume for a second that I want to get started. I want to make um, a new Discord bot. It's, it's a project I want to work on. Um, and I want to look for a template. So previously, you'd have to you know, go to Google or another search engine and, and try and find some code. Uh, but now you can just come to Replit and type in uh, Discord bot right on the home page. Um, if you click Enter here, you'll be taken to the search results page. Um, this basically will categorize all of the REPLs that are relevant. So we have, we have REPLs here. We have templates. This is boilerplate code that you can use. Um, you can fork it. So as an example, Discord bot Python starter, if we wanted to click on this, you see that it has uh, 21,000 forks. So a ton of people use this one. Uh, I'll go back. Uh, we have specific code snippets that are here as well. So if you wanted to just browse through some code um, that was related to a Discord bot, you could absolutely do this. You can find, you can, you can look through users that have, this is a kind of weird example, but users that have Discord bot in their username or their name. Um, if we click on this community tab, we'll see REPLs that have been published to the community. This is one of the social features of Replit. Uh, we see this one was made two years ago. If we wanted to filter and get something more recent, we could filter by the last month. And we would see, you know, this was published two weeks ago. This was published two weeks ago. Um, here is our documentation. So anything that you click on this page will take you to uh, docs.replit.com. So anything from tutorials, we see there's like, I guess, a Telegram bot here, a Discord bot tutorial here, uh, a Replit quick start guide. Um, and then finally, we have tags. So similarly to how when you post um, when you post something on a social media, when you post a REPL uh, in the community, you can attach tags. And clicking on these will take you to the community with um, with that has REPLs with these tags. Uh, so so right away, it looks like there's some pretty relevant uh, stuff in here. If we wanted to look at this this JavaScript Discord bot starter, this seems like it would be a really good place to start. This has been forked six thousand times. And then here's this Python one here. So I'm going to go back to the home page. Let's, let's assume that I am a new programmer, and I want to uh, go to Replit, and I want to learn how to program. I've never programmed before. Um, so I'm going to let, let's pretend that I want to learn Python. So I can type learn uh, Python. So on the Replit page, there is some um, relevant stuff um, right away. So learn Python dictionaries. There is a machine learning template here. 
but where I think we'll find the most relevant content is at the Docs tab. So here you can see there's this quick start guide getting started with Replit. There's some Python examples. Um, and right here, there's a tutorial called Building a Game with Pygame. So if I click on this, we'll be taken to docs.replit.com. This is a uh, intro beginner friendly uh, game tutorial. So if you wanted to, you know, like I said, if you've, if you've never programmed before and you type learn Python, uh, you, can, you can find one of our tutorials. I, I wanna point out that something that's pretty cool about this is previously, um, this tutorial was kind of buried. It was, it was hidden. You couldn't really get to it really easily unless you knew that our documentation had tutorials. And even then you'd have to scroll uh, all the way down to this tutorial section and not all of these are beginner, beginner friendly. So just being able to search, learn Python from the homepage and have this be discoverable is something that like we're really proud of. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the homepage and, and one last thing I wanna search here is games. So if I wanted to find a game, um, we see that there's a bunch there. So if we scroll down a bit, um, this one has 90,000 uh, runs, 3,000 comments, uh, 1,000 likes, uh, 2,000 forks. There's a ton of comments, but I'm not gonna go through them. Um, and this is just a simple uh, text-based Python game. So if we run this, um, and it'll take a moment to load, um, but this is just a text-based Python game. Uh, we could absolutely choose to play it if we wanted to. Um, so, and and this is this is all pretty cool because previously, if I if I wanted to play this, I'd have to probably know this person or scroll through the community. Um, but now it's all searchable. Um, if we wanted to refine our search even a bit further, we could look up Kajam. Kajam was a hackathon that we ran uh, at the end of last year where we encouraged people to make games using Kaboom.js, which is our in-house uh, JavaScript library. So there's some really cool games in here. Um, these would all be pretty fun. Uh, I think this one actually won an award. So this, this one is actually uh, like a lot, of, a lot of these are very high quality. Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically search. Um, that is the gist of it. Uh, I hope you're able to see uh, some of the cool things that you can do with search on Replit. Um, let me share my other screen again. Give me one moment. There we go. Cool. So next, I want to spend a few minutes talking about some of the uh, reasons that we think having a powerful search on Replit um, is important. Uh, there's four reasons. I'll, I'll go over them briefly. Uh, one, we believe that anyone uh, who uses Replit should be able to find any sort of content on Replit in less than 30 seconds. So if you want to find a friend or another user, um, if you want to get inspired to build something, if you want to find a new game to play like we just did, if you want to learn a new programming language, our, our general thesis for search here is that um, all of these things, this discovery of, of, the, of these things should just be one search away. Um, secondly, we're, we're really proud of our community. People make uh, amazing things all the time on Replit and, and they share them on Replit all the time too. Um, we, we thought it made sense for us to uh, build more tools and avenues for the discovery of these things. Uh, thirdly, Replit is about empowering people to build things um, and empowering people to learn how to build new things. So giving people the tools uh, to discover things on Replit is just important to us as a company. Uh, finally, we, we believe that we shouldn't have to rely on third-party tools and other search engines to surface and discover cool content on Replit. This is just something we believe uh, that we should do by default. So uh, that's all for me for now. Uh, next, I'm going to pass it to Reza. Reza is going to share a little bit of the story behind um, how we got started with search, and he'll also share some behind the scenes uh, from an engineering perspective of how we actually built it. So over to you, Reza. Thank you, Soren. Thanks for the awesome uh, demo of uh, search functionality. Um, as Soren mentioned, I'm Reza. I work on data at Replit. Um, at Replit, we're big believers in dogfooding our own product, and eventually we want to be able to build Replit within Replit. 
Um, so that means we spent a lot of time working on the product ourselves. And uh, our team was pretty unhappy with the search feature in the product. We didn't like the previous versions. We didn't really find it particularly useful. Um, so we started this as a Hack Week project. Uh, actually, our, our teammate Lincoln started it uh, on a team with, with a few other people and in a very, very short amount of time got up uh, a working version of, of search and everyone just loved their demo. I mean, everyone wanted to use it. Everyone wanted to know like immediately when it would be available. And we got just so much internal demand for this, for this feature that once we got back from Hack Week, we just decided we were gonna build it. And, you know, we broke out into pods and it took six weeks. And, and as uh, Soren mentioned, and as Amjad mentioned, it's now out to 100% of users. So everyone can use it um, site-wide on Replit. So I'm just gonna spend a few minutes talking about how we actually built it. Uh, there are a few different components to it. One is the web front end for search and, and the actual queries and results. So everything Soren just showed you, we had to build the pages for that. Then there's a server backend, and this is just where the requests come in and then where the results are served, those responses from the search engine are, are served back to the, the web front end. Uh, then the third component is are the actual um, search engines that index the, the various search documents and search those documents. And, um, and then the fourth and final are the data pipelines that actually move uh, data from one place to another, um, in, in this case from our uh, application databases uh, over to um, our, our actual search engines. And the two most challenging aspects of this project from an engineering perspective. Uh, one was the search engine and then one was the data pipelines. And so for the search engine, there are a number of different challenges that come up. Um, mainly code is not like other documents. So uh, code language is the, the text in code is just not similar to what you might find in say English text when you go search for documents elsewhere. And so there's a lot of uh, special characters in code and, and those mean specific things that might be ignored in other language documents. And so you can't really use normal uh, search engines with text analyzers and tokenizers. You have to build some of those things and customize them yourself. We still have more work to do in this area and we are going to improve the, um, the quality of search results, uh, but have, have done some good work on that area so far. Then the second component that was really challenging are the data pipelines. So we have a lot of data on Replit. There's over hundred million REPLs, and this means billions of files. And some of those files have thousands and thousands of different versions. And this isn't the type of data that you can just process on, um, you know, very easily and, and put into a search engine. And so to process this many files and this much data, we use a distributed um, computing framework called Apache Spark. And uh, the details are, um, are pretty involved and we'll probably do an engineering blog post on this at some point. But in, in short, uh, Apache Spark allows you to run these really high throughput jobs in parallel on clusters of many different machines. And you can do all of this at once and upload them from there to the search engine um, all in parallel. And what's uh, really nice about Apache Spark is when, when used properly, it can actually minimize the need to send data across that network of machines. And so it makes things much faster, much more efficient and, and uh, much more likely to scale over time. So those are just some of the engineering challenges that we, that we faced. Uh, of course, there, we have a lot more to do and, and the challenges go much deeper than just this brief description. Um, but we solve challenging engineering problems like this every day. And so if this is the type of thing that you're interested in, I would recommend that you check out our careers page at Replit and uh, consider coming to work with us to, to solve all types of engineering challenges, whether data or, or any of the other uh, amazing technologies that help Replit run each day. Awesome, thanks Reza. Um, so for the next like five to 10 minutes, uh, we'll stick around. Um, if you have any questions about uh, search in its current state or uh, kind of what the next steps are, um, we would be happy to uh, share and, and answer as best we can.
I see um, a question about any plans on being able to unlist uh, REPLs from search. Uh, this is a hard one. Uh, internally, we've been discussing the possibility of making private REPLs uh, free. Um, I, I, I don't have a concrete update on this yet, but um, it's, I think that that would probably be the way to unlist REPLs, you would make it private. But right now, um, you, you can't do that. I guess um, one other thing uh, is that currently we currently you can only search through the contents of published REPLs. And so um, this is in part because we want, we, we feel that uh, if you publish your REPLs, that's kind of a way of, um, of wanting other people to see it out there in the, in the community forum and, and page. And so for now, if you have a published REPL and you don't want it listed, you can just unpublish that, that REPL. But as Soren mentioned, I mean, this is something where uh, discussing internally and um, and and want to figure out the best way that makes uh, you know our, our users happy on Replit. There's a question. Um about search from the moderator's perspective. Uh, Ironclad asks, will it be possible to do a safe search for this? Uh, I figured out there's a blacklist of words, uh, but it makes it harder for, me, for some users to report certain REPLs. Um, yeah, I think one of the clear next steps for us in terms of like uh, community and content moderation is giving uh, moderators and admins a little bit more authority over what types of results they get um, when they use search. So yeah, I think removing uh, some of the uh, disallowed search terms for moderators and admins is something we will do. Uh, but since we just released two days ago, like we're still we're still really early in this process. Search is one of those things that will keep getting better uh, as people use it. Uh, this is our first time building something like this, so it's a huge learning process for all of us. But uh, to answer your question, yes, that that will be something that exists sometime soon. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. I, I realize we're done a little bit early, um, but thanks everyone uh, that decided to come and listen to us on a Saturday. Um, this is something we worked really hard on, so we're excited to be able to share it. Um, I'd encourage you to go to replit.com and try searching things uh, because we, we wanna get your feedback. We wanna know what you think about it. Um, so I'll, I'll end it with that. Thanks everyone so much. Thanks, everyone.